Now, this one is from Washington State News Network, and xylazine is the new street drug sweeping the nation and the Northwest. You, know, you thought that um, you thought that fentanyl was bad. This stuff is wild. This stuff is wild. Talk about this for one second. Go and Google, YouTube, search uh, Kensington Avenue in Philadelphia. If you haven't seen what this stuff is doing to people, it is mind blowing. I mean, it's a horse. It's basically a large animal tranquilizer. It's not made for human consumption, but they cut it with fentanyl. They cut it with heroin. They cut it with all this other stuff. And it literally just incapacitates people, puts people down. So you think you've seen the walking zombies in Portland or Seattle? You got nothing. You got nothing on Kensington Avenue. It's a whole nother level. I want to go there. I want to experience it. I need a bodyguard. Who's up for bodyguarding me? I'll, you know. Yeah. I would need help. I'd be like, ah, oh, yeah, somebody save me. Somebody save me. All right, let's read this story. It's no secret that nearly the entirety of the United States are dealing with a drastic influx of the pow powerful opiate fentanyl over the last couple of years. It's shown up in nearly every street drug ingested and has been marketed to children directly through colorful varieties of lookalike candy. Yep, fentanyl is coming in candy-colored flavors. We've seen that in busts numerous cities. According to the Center for Disease Control in 2021, 70,000 people died from fentanyl overdose in the U.S. That figure rose 25% from 2020 and has nearly double the amount of fentanyl overdose in 2019. And I bet you it doubles this year. Something like that. I bet you, you know, exponential, right? To the point where, to the point where people chastise me for saying, you know, naloxone, the antidote to fentanyl. I'm not a big fan of having it just handed out everywhere because it kind of admits that, hey, the problem's out of control and we can't do anything about it except trying to fix it on the other end, which is let's bring people back from the dead. That's literally what's going on. And people have said, well, people are dying everywhere. We should have it everywhere. And then that got to, to thinking, well, if I did have somebody ODing, whatever situation I was in, Maybe I should get some. So I ordered some online. You can get it for free here in King County. What, what are we even doing? What, how, how do we get here? No, nah, it's okay. Just take whatever drugs you need to. It'll be good. You guys, will, you'll be fine. You'll live long and happy lives. You know, the average age of somebody living on the streets right now, their life expectancy is between 48 and 51 years. And the average population is 76 kind of tells you what's going on in the streets. It's not good. Not good for their health. The problem has gotten so bad with fentanyl that many households, mine included, now keep doses of the opioid overdose reversing drug Narcan in our medicine cabinets. I am getting some for my um, kits. My I've got four um, first aid kits, Yeah, different cars, my boat, home, you know, whatever. Residents of many states, including here in Washington, can even receive the free doses of Narcan from the state. News of this epidemic has spread far and wide with nearly everyone knowing that it exists. It's with this in mind that we turn our attention to Mexican cartels and the Chinese government. Now, this is where we start to go down a little bit of a road where we know a lot of this to be true, but we've also got the author's interjection of what they believe to be the overall Causes. We're just going to read this. We're going to read this with an open mind. The cartels know the addictive properties of fentanyl and that it will produce returning customers, at least those who don't die from an overdose. Absolutely true. The Chinese government, looking to weaken the U.S. as much as possible, sees a bright future for themselves as more and more Americans become addicted or outright die. So what do we have? 120,000 overdoses last year or something like that? It was substantial. I mean, it was like, you know, we had, what, a million people die of COVID and look at how much, you know, effort we put into that. And then you got 10% of that and everybody's like, ah, oh, here's a clean needle. There you go. Well, I hope you get into detox sometime. So the Chinese manufacture the fentanyl where it is then shipped to Mexican cartels who mix it with other drugs, press it into pills and more before sending it into North America. All right. So that's, you know, that's, that's roughly where we sit with the fentanyl deal, right? We know, we know that's happening. 
because of where we make these busts of drugs. And we know, you know, who's sending it through. And you've got that wide open southern border, even though we are told "Ah, it's mostly closed. It's, you know, it's kind of closed. Well, it's not closed at all, right? I mean, you just watch video after video after video. of All right, there's some more dudes. There's a thousand more people walking across the border. Yep. All right. And you also know that it's not closed because you've got guys like Eric Carr in New York City, Mary, New York City, going to the border, going to El Paso and saying, hey, federal government, we need some help. We are overrun up in New York City. I'm down here. Listen to us. You know, these sanctuary cities are getting what they want, which is to try and help people. Ah, They're getting overrun because there's too many people coming across the border. All right. So the Chinese manufacturer of the fentanyl where it is then shipped to Mexican cartels who mix it with other drugs. We know that. Uh, if, if you don't believe that story, then that's fine. But then ask yourself, where's this stuff getting made? Where are the chemicals coming from? Who's making it? How's it getting into the country? Where is it coming from? Ask yourself those questions. Both of those aforementioned players are very well aware of the focus being put on fentanyl, the additional U.S. District Attorney's offices being opened across the country, and now wide availability of Narcan. Businesses have been too, business has been too good, and they're making moves to keep the cash cow producing. To keep the masses addicted, all right, so this is where we interject the author, and I am not opposed to what they're saying. To keep the masses addicted and to further degrade our culture as a country, They've decided to introduce a new drug to the market, xylazine. All right. Are these guys, are these guys manufacturing this? Cause it does seem weird that it just pops up in Philadelphia, right? It's like, how did Philly get picked? That's what I've tried to do research on. And it's like, well, how, why Philadelphia? And if you've been watching news for reasonable people for a long time, I've talked about xylazine a bunch. Yeah, that's because it, this is one of those things where you watch enough videos and, and you experience what's happening. You know, I've asked cops in Seattle and I've asked cops in Portland, have you guys seen this yet? Have you seen the Trank, Trank drug, whatever they want to call it? You know, what's funny is they call it Steph Curry because some drug dealers were cutting xylazine into heroin in Philadelphia years ago. They called it Steph Curry. They also called it Cardi B. I don't really know why, but <laughs> got to be some, there's got to be some folklore there, right? Xylazine is a central nervous system depressant that can cause drowsiness and amnesia and slow breathing, heart rate, and blood pressure to dangerously low levels. Taking opioids in combination with xylazine and other nervous uh, system depressants like alcohol or benzos increases the risk of life threatening overdose because it slows you down and basically just stops you. And that's why you'll see the folks on Kensington Avenue, which is a long run. Um, you'll see folks there. I'd love to know from if you're a cop in L.A. and you're listening, are we seeing this in Skid Row? Are we seeing xylazine in Skid Row yet? Is it there? I'd love to know. Anonymous, of course. Xylazine is not an opioid, though it acts much like one, making it a perfect addition to the illicit drugs fentanyl is currently being cut into without the same attention that fentanyl receives. Remember, fentanyl originally started as a cut to the the M30s, to the fake oxys, to all that. They were cutting it because it was cheaper, right? Now you got xylazine. Now they're doing the same thing. But xylazine just literally makes people double over and on the sidewalk. And you'll see videos of them. And like they'll almost have their heads between their knees while still standing. It like puts them that out. It's wild stuff. Really, the biggest issue with xylazine is that it's a tranquilizer. And as such, Narcan and other drugs like it won't reverse the overdose effect. The drug is injected, snorted, consumed orally, and smoked as well. The xylazine influx has occurred so swiftly that the Department of Justice won't conduct interviews concerning the drug, albeit for reasons undefined. I do not know if that is true or not. I did a quick search. But again, it's the Department of Justice. I don't know. Maybe, maybe it is true. I'm not really sure. Um, but it doesn't sound that outrageous considering everything else that's going on. Xylazine use brings the cadre of usual effects, including euphoria, confusion, blurred vision, and more. What's a bit different, however, are the skin ulcers. This is where it starts to get a little gnarly. Okay, Skin ulcers, abscesses, and related complications. Said skin ulcers are reportedly quite painful 
and users typically continually inject at the side of the ulcer to alleviate that pain, and this can lead to numerous health issues, including sepsis. Ugh, yeah. Hardcore no-go. Hardcore no-go. And, you know, I've seen people, I've seen people shooting meth, shooting whatever in downtown Seattle. And these people, you know, they are a notch below what is a functioning human being. They are just so whacked out of their mind on drugs. It's sad. It's, it's truly sad to see. But where I've heard about xylazine and how it impacts people is on soft white underbelly, but I've never, I never really knew where these people, they're probably in skid row. Um, don't know. You know what I mean? Don't know. Street names being used for xylazine include Trank, Trank Dope, Sleep Cut, Philly Dope, Steph Curry, Cardi B, Zombie Drug, and more. The first drug showed up in Puerto Rico in its illicit form in the early 2000s, though. It was first synthesized in 1962 by the Bayer Company as an alternative to morphine. And fentanyl is basically a synthetic opioid used to kill pain. They were created for legit medical reasons. And then somebody had the bright idea, well, it wouldn't take that much to, you know, put this together, this combination of chemicals. Yeah, uh, we've got Breaking Bad Dude back there. He can make it for us. And we're off to the races in enough of a scale, right, where you've got the demand. I always kind of want to, I always want to know. So you got xylazine in Philadelphia. How about that crack cocaine epidemic? How about that? That's when I was a kid and I was hearing about crack cocaine. We didn't have any in Seattle that I knew of. Obviously, it was probably there, but I also grew up here in Bellevue. And so we were super insulated. I went to a small private Christian college. There was no weed at my, my high school. Like, you know, you might hear of a kid smoking on the weekends, but there was none at school. There was none being sold. If you, if you drank a beer, you might go straight to hell. You might. Now, I'm exaggerating in that part, but it wasn't far behind, right? And then you'd read the newspaper because I loved reading the newspaper. Like crack cocaine enters the U.S. Crack cocaine takes over, you know, and then you'd see all the movies and you're like, what is going on here? How does it get started? Uh, you know, how, how does that explosion within a population get started? It's wild stuff, right? It's like, how, do, how does this work? How does it work? How does Trank, how does Steph Curry, how's that work in Philadelphia? I'd love to know. Overdose symptoms for xylazine include, but are not limited to small pupils, low body temperature, dry mouth, slow heartbeat, unconsciousness, and slowed or stopped breathing. All right. So you're unconscious and you are not breathing. Yeah. Yeah. That's not good. That's called a straight up overdose, right? I mean, that's just kind of where we're at. It's, uh, and so, you know, this stuff is just, and it, the article goes on to say there's like one antidote known for xylazine, but it costs like a hundred bucks a pop. And it's basically, you know, we're, we just haven't even dealt with it yet. But I kind of wanted to do a full podcast on this because I'm hearing more and more about this. Because if you put this together with what's already going on with fentanyl, you know, it's super interesting is that I'm hearing more and more about people who go out and do the cleanups in the encampments. I hear from police officers, hey, this area used to be just filled with syringes, filled with syringes. Now it's filled with little bits of tinfoil that you smoke fentanyl off of. I don't know if you've seen how that works. You know, you, you ground up a pill, you get it in powder form, you put it on a piece of tin foil, you light below, it creates it into basically a vapor, and then you smoke it with a crack pipe or whatever straw or implement that you have. I mean, that's just kind of how it's done, right? So you've got areas now that used to have needles that now have bits of tinfoil with, you know, a, um, a black tar, almost like layer on it, which is what you just burned up. And then you put some of that in your system and then you end up with abscesses and it's not good, right? It's wild stuff. <laughs> <laughs> 